Hi, my name is Heather Richmond. Welcome to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well. And as always, thank you to anyone who has taken the time to share my work, reach out, make comments, ask questions. Those things are always appreciated. So this is the third in my series, Remembering Your Power. And specifically in this series, I am sort of focusing in on um, giving reminders uh, to the awakening soul. So at this time, our, our soul, our subconscious, we could say our imagination is in this process of sort of, as I spoke about in my previous series, you are the bridge. Uh, we are sort of navigating this in between space between, you know, we could say 3d and 5d and beyond or, um, spirit and matter above and below. So, um, these are just some realizations that have come through for me that I feel called to share, uh, that will hopefully be helpful in your own journey, because I do find that we, you know, that's one of the many ways that we help one another out, you know, by, by sharing my perspective, you can put that, that piece together with the pieces of your own perspective. And then, you know, I get others perspectives. And so we all just sort of, um, fit it together in this giant, uh, infinite, I guess, cosmic sort of puzzle. So in this um, episode, I want to speak about time and essentially, obviously I'll go into it in much more detail, but essentially I had this realization that um, so much of the conflict that we experience in our lives, particularly before awakening, but even, you know, to some degree after we, we awaken as we are going through this process, so much of the conflict that we experience with other people happens because um, we lack an understanding through no fault of our own. It's simply blocked off from perception, but we lack the ability to understand um, the ways that we call in different versions of people from the quantum field. And of course we do this. We know that we are the cause of all effects that we perceive. So we do this based on our own perspective. And so oftentimes that combined with the, the idea that there is a time delay between <clears throat> the inner planes of thought and its physical manifestation, um, because of that, there, you know, tends to be a lot of confusion about, you know, why people act differently in any given moment. Um, you know, for example, if there's someone around you, someone in your reality who is, um, you know, we tend to sometimes throw around the term bipolar. Technically, we are all bipolar, <laughs> but um, until we achieve this this balance. But, um, you know, if someone is behaving sort of erratically, that should be a signal not to um, look at that person and say, uh, oh gosh, this person is just crazy or we need to cut cords, we need to cut them out, any of that, that should be a, a signal to, to us to look within and examine our own perspective and see where, where we are at in our, our own state of, of being. And we can then, once we have that understanding that we are the cause of the effects, then we can you know, adjust as, <clears throat> as necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and I will read the article that I wrote on this. Um, I posted it on Patreon. So I will send, or excuse me, I will, uh, put the link in the description box. And, um, as always, my 
post there are always made public. So there's no uh, obligation for any kind of subscription or donation unless you, of course, just feel called to do that. So I'll go ahead and read and I'll provide any commentary as needed. All time exists all the time, meaning infinite states exist eternally, and we can align with any one of them in any given moment. So what I'm speaking about here is um, essentially the quantum field and how that works. Picture a massive warehouse that contains experiences. In each moment, we can move into the warehouse and intentionally select our experience. Prior to awakening, this is done unconsciously. But as we evolve, we come to understand that we, so to speak, make our selection by intentionally directing our awareness to the desired state and imagining it with feeling. <clears throat> So if you picture this, you know, warehouse that in truth is, it's not just massive, it's, it's infinite, but let's say we have this warehouse and it contains every experience possible, right? And you can enter in to this warehouse of sorts. And what happens is you have the ability to illuminate whatever experience that you wish to have with the light of your awareness. And after, um, excuse me, let me back up. Before we awaken and come into this understanding, we do this um, automatically, but we do so on an unconscious level. We don't, you know, we, our our light is very scattered. Uh, we don't have an understanding of how to direct it with intention. But the more we wake up and the more we learn about um, our abilities, we can go ahead and it's, if you picture the difference between a lamp that's, you know, kind of scattered and wide, far reaching and a laser. So as we, um, you know, come to a better understanding of this, we can direct our focus or our light of awareness in a more laser-like way, we could say. Because of this, it could be said that we navigate our way through any number of timelines during the course of a day or moment to moment. For whatever reason, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't necessarily resonate with the word timeline. So I put it in quotation marks. Um, I look at things as more like states, individual states of being or individual moments. Um, so I don't know this for some reason I'm, I'm sensing kind of a disconnect with this word timeline, but I feel like that's the best way I can explain it. So, you know, I think sometimes you hear people speaking about this idea of timelines, like, um, they'll say things like, I'm going to jump timelines. Okay. <laughs> We're doing that, you know, continuously. It doesn't mean like you're, you're going to get from one train, uh, move from one train to the other train necessarily. And it just continues on this linear path. You know, maybe that's the disconnect. I'm, I'm seeing timelines as more you know, obviously linear in succession where, whereas it's, it's really not that way. As such, we essentially call in different versions of people in our reality based on our perspective, or we could say based on our selection of the experience we wish to have. Obviously, this leads to great confusion for the lower mind as it cannot perceive the inner workings of this process. This is one of the reasons why there is so much interpersonal conflict when we are operating in the reversed order of creation. And um, by reversed order, essentially, I mean that we are reactive and we don't we lack the understanding that we are the cause. 
Um, okay. We have the expectation that others should behave in one specific way based upon our past observations of them. I don't think anyone would argue with that. That's how we've been conditioned. But it can be perplexing when they deviate from this behavior. So we often fall into fear, or the lower mind does, and we become reactive rather than creative. When we ourselves take on a different perspective, others in our reality will mirror that back to us. And part of the confusion on this, I believe, is that, um, you know, it's because of this idea of a time delay. So it, you know, it may not happen immediately. It might, but chances are, you know, especially if it's unconscious, it's not going to happen immediately. So we lose track of when we planted the seed to draw this behavior in. Or we could say we forget uh, that we went into the warehouse and we selected this particular experience or this particular perspective and called in this um, this version of this person, this mirroring. We cannot understand why others may behave one way in one moment and another way in another moment or say one thing and do another, but truly we cause all effects. When you really come into an understanding of that idea there, that we cause all the effects that we perceive, that really is just a huge key to your freedom because you're no longer bound to being reactive to other people. And in truth, if you, if you really do understand this, in truth, no one can hurt you. No one can cause harm to you because you understand that you're causing it. And as such, you understand that you can change it. So I'll speak about that. When we react to external circumstances, thinking them to be the cause and have power on their own, we continue to draw in similar states on a loop as our awareness is the animating force. The truth is that we always have a choice in what we want to experience. We are never stuck and nothing can be lost. So this idea that, you know, um, you'll often hear people speak about, uh, you know, higher consciousness is um, guide, or they'll say my guides, or, you know, my soul, or, or whatever, my higher self is guiding me, and they, and, and this aspect of me is, um, you know, going to take something away from me in order to teach me a lesson or something of that nature. Uh, that is a misunderstanding of, or it's someone who has not yet quite come into their power because we cannot claim that we create our, our own reality and then also say that something above us can take something away or, um, or give something to us. We can be guided because that aspect of us does have a higher perspective, but as we continue to rise, we, you know, eventually in time, we become one with those higher aspects. And so we can see that not only are we being guided by an operant power, we are the operant power ourselves. If we wish to experience harmonious relationships with others, we must always strive to imagine or think of them as their highest self, no matter what. And sometimes I get it. It is challenging to do, um, <clears throat> but truly there are no exceptions to this. If, you know, if we're in the mindset that we want to, uh, destroy someone else, or we want to see someone else fail or be punished, even any of that, no matter how justified it may seem. This, this is just my perspective. No matter how justified it may seem, um, then that 
again, that's a misunderstanding of our own power. And it's also a, an indication that our, our subconscious has not, our soul has not yet been fully alchemized. It has not been cleared of that fear because if we want to punish someone else or see someone else fail in any way, that's a fear-based reaction. That's not, that, that is not someone who is creating their own reality. If someone is angry with you, you have a choice. You can perpetuate that anger by continuing to dwell upon how unreasonable he is being or replaying the exchange in your mind's eye. Or we can revise the experience in our minds and think about the higher, or we might say more desirable, version of him, envisioning peace where there was previously discord. And before you know it, with persistence, that's key, he will become the man you envisioned him to be. You have the power to take the tyrant and turn him into a man of peace. You can make the weakling strong. And through your heart, the pauper is transformed into the king. So this really is one of the primary, we could say, tasks that the soul subconscious is called to do. We are, um, I've spoken about this in other videos, but essentially we are redeeming humanity from within. Doesn't mean that we're coming out and saying we're, you know, I'm here to save the world or anything like that. It's not that, that is not it. Um, it is an internal action. Uh, we have misused our imaginations in very um, clear ways, both uh, you know collectively and individually. And so we have to go through this process of redeeming humanity from within uh, because we have to... Uh, redeem, trying to figure out the best way to put this, we have to redeem our misspent imagination, imaginal acts. Um, that that's, we have to do that in order to then learn how to come back into our creative power and imagine with a, a cleansed soul. Okay, there is a time delay at the third dimensional level as our thoughts become things. In the beginning, as you are retraining your consciousness, even if you change your thought of someone, it may not become manifest in physical reality immediately. That is why persistence in faith is crucial. Truly, what we dwell upon will become reality. So if it seems like it's taking a long time for this ha to happen, you know, you're reimagining someone and you're finding that, it, you know, they haven't made the changes that you've imagined, just wait, just be patient. It will happen if you persist, if you don't allow doubt to creep in and, um, block your your imaginal acts. And it doesn't mean that there's never going to be any doubt. It's just that when when that doubt does arise, you want to acknowledge it consciously and work to and you know observe it as a, you know, the neutral observer and then simply release it or transmute it. When you retract your awareness from undesired circumstances, you kill them. Uh, that's a reference to the, the um, verse in scripture that says, I kill, I make alive, I wound, and I heal. Uh, and then there's more to that that is escaping me at the moment. But, you know, so I'm not speaking, of course, of a literal um killing here. Meaning if you do not wish to experience something, you must remove your awareness from it and redirect it toward a higher state. So of course we can see that that's how we've had, um, we've had this backwards. We've been operating in reverse order because, um, you know, something that trans, 
often something transpires in our reality that is um, upsetting in some way, we react to it. Well, all we have to do if we, not all we have to do, I don't mean to make it sound so easy, but (laughs) what we should do or learn to do is to um, retract our awareness from it and not give it our reaction at all. And this is something that I was, um, I've been just sort of guided to do automatically for a while now. Um, so, you know, it's a process and, and your soul will, you know, will guide you on that until you, until you learn better, you know, how to do that on your own. And it, it, at a, at a certain point, it just becomes habitual. You don't even really have to think about it. Essentially, you must imagine your reality to be better than what it appears to be. That, in my mind, is ascension. If you find that you're having trouble imagining clearly, so if we're looking to, you know, reimagine someone or revise a situation um, or just for creation in general, we know that, of course, we have to use the imagination. But sometimes, at least, you know, in the beginning, uh, that's a little bit difficult to do because we've been so conditioned out of using the imagination, you know, since childhood for most of us. Um, So if you're having trouble with that, with imagining, you can draw desired images from memories of past events instead. This signals to the subconscious that you desire to experience more of this circumstance and associated feeling. So, you know, if you're having conflict with a particular person in your reality uh, and you find yourself replaying this conflict in your mind's eye, the best thing you can do is to, you know, um, imagine them in a better state but if you're having trouble creating a new state for them, then then just think about some positive memories that you've experienced with them, times when they were acting from their highest aspects. And that will go a long way in, in calling more of that in. To break out of the loop of unconscious creation requires strength, resilience, and true faith. It is not an easy thing to reverse the only conditioning that you have ever known, to rise above the data of the senses and to ignore appearances. But if you can do it, you will have found the key that will unlock the floodgates of heaven, bringing new life to all within your kingdom. So that is what needed to come through. As always, if there are any questions or comments, please do feel free to leave those below. And thank you so much for listening.